Hi everyone, my name is Yan and I'm a scientist within the absorption team of SimSIP. Today, to help prepare for your upcoming Absorption 1 focus workshop, I will show you the oral absorption user interface of the SimSIP simulator. Before we begin, please make sure that you have viewed the other pre-workshop video, A Beginner's Introduction to the SimSIP Simulator by my colleague Oliver Hatley. That video covered many of the basic aspects of the simulator, while this video expands on the oral absorption interface. In addition, there is also a publicly available SimSIP demo video by Hannah Jones on YouTube. This video is a great introduction to the simulator that would be suitable viewing for both experts and non-experts. So I've got the version 21 of SimSIP open. Uh, this is the latest version of SimSIP released in November 2021. As Ollie mentioned, the simulator separates data into systems data or physiological data in this population section, drug data in the substrate section, and a trial design section. So if we click on this population icon, it's like we've opened up a database for this virtual population, which is the healthy volunteers population in this case. And you can see that the physiological data is arranged into different organs, tissues, and even fluids, just like the human body. You can explore the data here in your own time, but I'll do a quick run through of the GI tract, uh, which is of course what's relevant for oral absorption. Here you'll find physiological data of the GI tract that affect a compound's absorption. To pick a few examples, we have data on residence time in various parts of the GI tract. Anatomy of the intestine, for example, length and diameter um, of each uh, intestinal segment. Um, there is a lot more data, but if we scroll down you can see that we zoom in on each segment of the GI tract. So for our more advanced ADAM or MADAM uh, models, which I will discuss in more detail later, we divide the GI tract into nine segments, stomach, duodenum, jejunum one and two, ileum one, two, three and four, uh, as well as the colon. We collect data and associated inter-individual variability for each segment where possible, such as uh, enzyme abundance, uh, which affects intestinal metabolism, luminal pH, which affects solubility and dissolution, faster than fed bile salt concentrations, and so on. So as you can imagine, many scientists' hours have gone behind each of the data boxes since they are the result of many meta-analyses over the years. Moving on to the substrate section where drug-specific data is contained, for today's purpose, it would be the absorption section that we are interested in, specifically the GI tract tab for oral absorption. So right at the top, we can see that there's three absorption models to choose from. Uh, with the first order model being the simplest uh, absorption model. The first order model treats the GI tract as a single compartment, like a big bucket, and the rate of drug absorption out of that bucket is dependent on the drug concentration within the bucket or compartment. For the first order model, you can either user input the fraction absorbed FA, absorption rate constant Ka, and any lag time, or you can predict uh, FA and KA based on the permeability input below. Note that if the first order model is selected, a compound is assumed to be fully in solution, and therefore there will be no requirement uh, for solubility, dissolution, and supersaturation input that are normally contained within the formulation tab, which is currently unavailable. The permeability of a compound uh, can be predicted via what we collectively call correlation-based methods or our mechanistic model, uh, MECPEF. 
both of which will be covered in detail in the gut wall passive permeability lecture. In addition, the parameters that relate to gut wall first pass metabolism, such as fraction unbound in the gut, blood flow to the gut, will be covered in the gut wall uh, metabolism lecture. Moving on to the ADAM and MADAM models, these are our increasingly uh, mechanistic, increasingly complex models that give us the ability to consider much more than the first order model. In ADAM and MADAM, the gut is divided into nine segments or regions, which allows us to model the fate of a compound in each segment with considerations to regional differences in solubility, dissolution, supersaturation, permeability, and metabolism. M-ADAM stands for multi-layer gut wall within ADAM, so further compartmentalizing the gut wall and its adjacent layers. So when ADAM or M-ADAM is selected, the formulation tab becomes active. And here you can select a formulation ranging from a solution a solution with the ability to handle drug precipitation, a suspension or a solid formulation, including uh, immediate release formulation, enteric coated granules, or uh, a control or modified release formulation. The transit times tab allows the user to activate the segregated transit time model, which applies different transit times to solution so your fluid and dissolved drug, to find particles that are dissolving, pellets and monoliths. So these four different forms would move down the GI tract at different rates, depending on the prandial state uh, of the subjects, as well as the content of a meal. Next, the diffusion layer model tab which automatically becomes active when you select a formulation option that requires drug dissolution to take place. There are many subtabs within the diffusion layer model, and I will go through them individually. In ADAM and MADAM, dissolution from an immediate release dosage form can be mechanistically modeled using the generalized Wang and Flanagan diffusion layer model equation. There are a couple of model options uh, to handle dissolution from fine particles. With the particle population balance model, the PPB model being the more mechanistic model in terms of accounting for particle counts while maintaining mass balance. And therefore the PPB model is the recommended model to use. This is also the model to use if you wanted to have the ability to model two solid states in the GI tract for example, when a crystalline and an amorphous form are both present in a dosage form. Or if you wanted to model drug precipitation into a solid state different than what was dosed. Next is a model option for particle HEF. HEF being the thickness of the uh, effective diffusion layer surrounding a dissolving drug particle. As its name suggests, the fluid dynamics model considers the hydrodynamic conditions uh, such as flow in the GI lumen, while the Hintz-Johnson model assumes that HEF is the same as particle radius below a set cutoff. At the bottom of the general subtab is where you can input particle size information, and that can be a monodispersed uh, population with a single input value for particle radius, or it can be a polydispersed input, in which case you'll need to click on this button, uh, open up the um, PSD pop-up, and input the relevant data uh, such as cumulative density uh, versus particle diameter distribution, and the number of bins uh, used in the simulation. So as mentioned, if you select the PPB model, you'll have the ability to activate two solid states uh, modeling and specify the fraction of each solid state contained within your dose. If your drug is present as a salt form in the dose, uh, you can also specify that here. 
So once dual solid state uh, modeling is activated, we will see that for solid state specific parameters, uh, such as particle size distribution, there are now two active tabs, solid state one and solid state two. So you can enter different information for each solid state and the simulator will handle the information accordingly. In the aqueous phase solubility subtab, the equation that we use to calculate equilibrium solubility is shown here. The equation considers the solubility of the unionized and ionized species, as well as solubilization by bile salt micelles and excipient, if activated. In the relevant solid state subtab is where you'll have the ability to input your compound's intrinsic solubility, that is the solubility uh, of the unionized species. There's multiple ways to do that. Uh, you can either user input a known value in milligrams per mil, predict it based on log P, molecular weight uh, and melting point, or if it's an ionizable compound and you have solubility data at a particular pH, the simulator can automatically back calculate a value using the henderson hasselbalch equation. To account for salt-limited solubility, which is relevant for ionizable compounds, users can either select the simple but crude solubility um, factors method, or they can use the solubility product KSP model. The KSP model is part of our mechanistic salt model and can be used to calculate salt solubility. So this is when the salt form is dosed. It can also be used to model the common ion effect of salts. However, its use is not exclusive to salt formulations as it can also be used to model interactions between drug dose in the free form and endogenous ions in the gut. Next, uh, particle surface solubility. In the diffusion layer model, particle surface solubility can be important to consider because the concentration on the particle surface is the driving concentration for dissolution. Here, users can either assume bulk solubility, define surface solubility, or consider the surface pH of the particle, which can be altered by dissolving acids or bases. So again, this mechanistic surface pH model is part of our mechanistic salt model, which means that it, uh, along with the KSP model are automatically activated when the salt form is specified in the dose. The bile micelle mediated solubility tab allows users to apply bile micelle mediated solubilization enhancement to increase the apparent solubility of the compound. The key input for this tab are the log bile micelle to buffer partition coefficients at uh, log KMW, and we consider the log KMW of the unionized and ionized species separately. The simulator has a built-in predictor for the log KMW values. However, if you have bioreleved solubility data, such as in FASIF or FESIF, you may wish to calibrate the predicted values to match the bioreleved solubility, and user input the calibrated values here. Bile micelle solubilization, including the calibration of the KMW values, will be covered in the food effect lecture and hands-on. The supersaturation and precipitation tab is where you will input parameters that will define your supersaturation and precipitation profile when the conditions arise. So we know that the solubility of a compound can be dynamic in the GI tract, and a reduction in solubility can lead to precipitation with or without a preceding period of supersaturation. And that can be achieved by the use of formulations such as amorphous solid dispersions or rapidly dissolving salt forms, to name a few, or it can be achieved in response to the gastrointestinal physiology itself, such as when there's a pH change when transiting from the stomach to the duodenum, in which case a polysoluble wheat base may supersaturate and eventually precipitate. 
There are two models to handle supersaturation and precipitation, the first order models and the advanced precipitation model. The first order models require the definition of a critical supersaturation ratio and a precipitation rate constant. These inform when precipitation is triggered and the rate at which it takes place thereafter. So the model is fairly arbitrary and therefore the input of these parameters would be best informed by the modeling of in vitro transfer experiments, which we will provide an example of in the SEVA hands-on. The advanced precipitation model is more mechanistic. It includes a nucleation and growth model based upon classical nucleation theory and the reverse diffusion layer model. The use of the supersaturation precipitation functionality will be covered in more detail in the ADAM part two lecture. Luminal degradation of a compound can be taken into account by a first order model where users can define a degradation rate constant for each segment of the GI tract if they wish. So that covers most of the user interface for passive absorption. Beyond passive absorption, there's other determinants for oral bioavailability, such as intestinal transport and metabolism. Intestinal metabolism will be covered in the gut wall metabolism lecture in this focus workshop, while intestinal transporters will be covered separately in the transporter focus workshop. After discussing the systems data section and the drug data section, I'll now move on to the trial design section. Oli has already covered most of this section in the other introductory video. Here, I'd just like to mention that in the oral dosing section of the substrate and the inhibitors, you can specify the prandial state, so dosing either in the fasted or fed state, the meal content, as well as the fluid intake in conjunction with the dose. And these food and drink conditions will be considered within the absorption model. In addition, you can customize dosing by selecting the food staggering option here, which is available for ADAM uh, or MADAM. Here, you can specify dosing and non-dosing related food and fluid events if you wish. For example, if you wanted to simulate the food and fluid intake conditions of a trial following drug dosing. Lastly, expanding on what Oli has shown in the output section, I will show you some options related to absorption. The first thing to know is that the output options are dynamic depending on the model selected. So for first order model, the absorption output sheet is in the main sheets tab and reports parameters such as effective permeability, fraction of the dose absorbed for each individual in the trial. If however, ADAM or MADAM is selected, you will find that the ADAM or MADAM tab becomes available and the output options are greatly enhanced. This is so that you can explore the physiology and the fate of the compound in each segment in detail. You can choose to output systems data, which are data related to gastrointestinal physiology, such as segmental dimensions, bulk salt concentrations, luminal fluids, and much more. The compound or drug outputs are comprehensive and where relevant, you will have the option to output parameters according to solid state as well as individual segments of the GI tract. For example, if I wanted to explore the dissolution of my compound in the stomach and the duodenum, I will select GI tract profiles, check both stomach and duodenum, check dissolution rate and luminal free concentration, for example, and I will get an output that looks like this, reporting the profiles in separate tabs. The best way to acquaint yourself with the output section is just to jump in and try out different options. Having said that, in the practical sessions of our workshop, if we wanted you to look at a particular output, we will provide detailed guidance in the workshop notes or question sheets. With that, I conclude this video 
and hope you learned more about SimSip's user interface for oral absorption. I also highly encourage you to utilize the help function in SimSip as it provides detailed explanation of the interface and the models behind it. Thank you for viewing and have a great workshop.